we, we believe the, the scripture that says the gospel is the power of God and the salvation. And we believe when I tell that story again, the same power that was released at Calvary comes into the room again today. And the same deliverance and salvation from 2,000 years ago comes today. We believe that. I believe that's what's supposed to happen when we partake of communion. Because when we testify of what he did, we're supposed to, that's what the word communion means. It means koinonia, it means partake. I believe every time we take it, we're supposed to partake of what he did. Maybe this is why God said, you overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your. Maybe when you give your testimony, maybe when you talk, maybe when you talk about what God did yesterday, the same power comes in the room today. Maybe it's why the redeemed of the Lord are supposed to say so. The thing that strikes me is that, that, that ring of truth about something. Is that I know what happens when I go somewhere where God has done something significant. And I revisit that and say it again. I know what I sense when I go to Cape Henry and read the decree over America that lays out God's destiny for this nation. When I do it, which I've done several times, I feel what must have been happening on that day in 1607. A holy, awesome fear of God comes on me. A faith rises up in me. The presence of God comes to that beach. And I realize I am doing something that is not just a ritual. God is here. You don't have to be at Cape Henry to do that, by the way. If you ever get the chance, you should go. And it doesn't have to be what he, he, what Hunt, Robert Hunt, prophesied at Cape Henry. He's probably a prophecy or two about Georgia. There's probably a promise He's given you about your prodigal. Yes. I, I, I mean, what I'm about to say, I don't, I can't prove it. I'm not positive this is true, but I'm, I'm, conf, I'm, I'm confident it's true. I don't think there's ever been a a four or five week period of time when as many people in as many places have commanded the word of the Lord that he has spoken in the past, the forward over our nation, over our states, our cities, our kids, our schools, our governments. I don't think, because I know, I know for an absolute fact, tens of thousands of people around this nation are doing this. Maybe hundreds of thousands of people are doing it. Because it's not just my minutes, it's not just giving 15. And I, we, we, we're getting scores of letters and emails about people that have been doing this before we ever talked about it. He's like, I said, we're already doing this. God's already been telling us. They didn't, he didn't use the same phrase, but he sent them on these assignments to go here and here and here and, you know, and pray around the border here and do. I just have to believe. That, that when we say what God says, because let, now, now, let me take this a step farther and then I'm going to wind this down and, and then I'm going to do something really amazing tomorrow morning that some of you are going to miss. <laughs> and I'm saving the part that will change your life forever for morning.
Let me just end with this. It doesn't, to say what God says, and that release his power, to say it together, to say it with him, uh, it doesn't have to be quoting scripture. Oh, that's messing with some of you, isn't it? <laughs> this has to be the word of the Lord. Now, I am not equating prophecy or anything a person says with the Bible. Because this is the only infallible word I know of. This is the only eternal, infallible graphe of God right here. And everything anybody else says has to be judged by this. Okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm with you 1,000% on that. But it is scriptural to say things that God says that are not written down and come into agreement with them. Anything you hear and you think it's from God, you better judge that. You better judge it with Scripture. Often you need to have others help you judge that and, and, and interpret it so that you know you're really understanding what God is saying. But when you know it's a word from the Lord, you need to begin to say that. I know I can I can I've done this long enough to read you, okay? I know some of you are wrestling with that. Paul told Timothy when Timothy was going through a really hard time. Timothy had a really hard job. He was leading one of the most challenging a church in the most challenging one of the most challenging places at that time on the planet and one of the most influential and he was a young man, and he was, he was just having all kinds of adversity. And Paul, who mentored, discipled, fathered this young guy, and he said, I'm going to leave you here at Ephesus. Take it. And you read the, the two letters to Timothy, you, you can see in there, this is the heart of a father. He's, he's about to die. Second Timothy is the last book he wrote, the epistle Paul the last epistle he wrote. He's, he didn't have time to, 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 to be nice and all touchy-feely with Timothy. He's just saying, look, I'm not much longer here, and I need to say some things to you. Now get it together. God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And you fight the fight of a good soldier and you lay hold with faith. And he's got a lot of instructions to this guy. He said, I know this is in here. I'd love to teach someone that. because Some of the words he used have the connotation of, I know what's inside of you because I put it in there. Now you get it out. But he said to him at one point, you take the prophecies that we prophesied over you and I want you to use them to fight this battle I want you to get them out and read them and start saying them and saying war with the words the prophecies that we gave you 